when I switched from arts to ecology, a lot of people like criticized me about it because they felt I was not focused enough. I'm an artist, an ecologist, and I'm also working on books where I can teach about ecology, but through art, so I'm incorporating a lot of art into it. I can't even remember when I started drawing because uh, ever since I was a kid, I think I've been doing it. Uh, drawing was my way of just putting out whatever was going on in my head. I was studying at uh, Chitrakala Parishad uh, because I loved animals so much. I also decided to volunteer with an animal welfare organization. So at the center we used to get a lot of injured animals, it could be snakes or mongooses, birds, all these, you know, actually seeing so many animals up close being injured and displaced, what's, what made me feel that I didn't want to be just exhibiting artworks in a studio, I really, really wanted to work on the ground. That's when I made a decision to uh, switch to uh, conservation. I studied ecology, I immediately moved to working uh, as a wildlife researcher. So one of the advantage of being a scientist is that I have been there in the field and experienced it. So I can bring that not just information but the excitement to public and then being an artist I can really simplify what I speak. I, I can move away from using scientific jargons and instead speak in the language that everybody else can understand. Uh, pollination is uh, one example that I use uh, to get people to understand why it is important for us to conserve nature. We have learned that okay there needs to be flower, pollination has to happen for us to get fruits. But why, how does it happen in a fig tree? If you actually cut open a fig fruit, what you see, those all those tiny little uh, things are actually flowers. So the flowers in a fig fruit are actually hidden within the fruit instead of showcasing outside. Now why did this happen? They formed this uh, relationship with a fig wasp where a single species of fig wasp pollinates a particular species of fig. For example, a banyan tree has its own fig pollinating wasp. A peepal tree has its own pollinating wasp. So when they, when they formed this bond with this particular fig wasp, there was no need for them to showcase their flowers. So if we don't have fig wasp, we don't have fig trees. If we don't have fig trees, there are so many animals that are dependent on the tree which will be lost. When you're first introducing uh, birds or trees to uh, children, if you, can, if you just roll out names of these uh, trees or animals, uh, they cannot retain information so easily. So what is important is to bring, get them to, you know, actually feel a sense of wonder towards what they're looking at instead of just teaching them facts. And uh, that's when I started uh, kind of experimenting using art forms to teach about ecology. Say, instead of just taking them to a tree and saying this is a mango tree or a neem tree, get children to draw the leaves, look at the difference, rub the bark, uh, take the impression of the bark. When you actually sit there for like 10, 20 minutes and sketch that particular subject, then you start noticing things that are happening in nature. It's not the work of just a scientist out there to solve the problems anymore. 
I do believe in interdisciplinarity and uh, I think more and more collaborations should happen if we want to bring in some change.